Okay, I guess like we can just get started while Josh Johnson um, is gonna um, hop on in like a minute or so. Um, welcome guys, thank you so much for attending um, Philanthropy event too. And it's we're gonna have like a really exciting time today, especially we have two um, special guest speakers, Matteo and Tiago from B Marco Modular Structures. And um, would you like to um, have a brief description about yourself and um, tell us more about B Marco? Um, I'll, I'll kick it off. Yeah, my name is Matteo. Um, thanks for having us tonight. Uh, Camelia, it's, it's really an honor and a pleasure to be uh, speaking here. Um, I'm an operations manager at B Marco Structures, which means I deal with uh, the everyday um, operations. I bring in subcontractors, I oversee their work on our buildings, and um, I'm responsible for delivering our projects on time. Hey, everyone. I'm Tiago, and my position is pretty much identical to Mateo. Mateo is the more of the, uh, he's in the office more. Uh, he communicates a lot with our clients. He handles change orders and uh, and is somewhat involved in the pre construction. And I'm more uh, on, the, on the field executing things, uh, talking with subcontractors individually and making sure they, uh, they deliver their work and build things up to spec and build things as the plans dictate them. Awesome. Um, we can have uh, Josh introduce himself uh, slightly later. Um, should we just get straight on to the PowerPoints? That works for us. Would you like me to start presenting? Yeah, if you could share your screen as well. That'd be great. Yes, I'll share my screen. Can you see uh, our presentation? Yes. All right, I'll dive right in. So like we said, we're uh, part of a company named B Marco Structures. We're a modular uh, construction company based out of Atlanta. Um, in particular, Tiago and I are part of the steel division. So we, uh, we, we deal mainly with steel, uh, steel buildings, whether it's shipping containers or um, another industrial kind of building we call uh, panel buildings. Um, so my, uh, my slide format's pretty simple. I just have some pictures and then a few bullet points at the very end to discuss modular a little bit more. Um, so this is a very standard build for us. It's just a control room for our clients. So they'll outfit these with heavy electrical equipment. And we take a shipping container and we put framing and then um, plywood painted. Um, so that's part of it. Another kind of build is a more retail side. So this was a uh, this is a skate shack. Um, it's got nice wood paneling, storefront glass, outlets, uh, data ports, um, just about everything you'd expect in a in the Momola building. Um, and this is comprised of two 20 foot containers. So we'll cut open sides and reinforce them um, to make the space a little bit bigger. This is a modular office that we sent to Costa Rica. Um, pretty simple layout again, just outlets for the customer to uh, uh, put desks against. And uh, we put AC units that we ship inside the container that they set up on site. So you can cool these, you can have power. There's a bathroom not shown in the picture on the other side of the uh, camera. This uh, and a pretty diverse product. Um, it's a water filtration plant. So we built them the shell. We did, uh, again, framing, FRP on the interiors, the wall, the wall covering that we use. And we let them do all their um, more complicated uh, irrigation things for their filtration plant. Um, so we're kind of, we'll create the shell for people very frequently. And this is on our larger modular side. These are panel buildings. These will go to like rock quarries, other uh, industrial plants where they process things. They'll put extremely heavy equipment in there. Um, and the nice part is that we can build it at our shop. We can send it down the road to our client who outfits it with electrical. And then it goes to their client on site. 
So it's it's a uh, all built in factory and just set on site. This is an interesting little project. Uh, it's a container we cut in half, um, and we ship to um, an observatory uh, either in Chile or, or somewhere somewhere in the uh, South America or the Caribbean. Um, and they wanted a lidar observatory, and so we built them what they. Uh, the specs that they sent us. Um, this is what we came up with. This is an interesting product. It's a coffee shop that we sent to um, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Company developer out there uh, is building these modular coffee shops so that they can reach areas faster um, and hit developing markets and, and uh, grow their business that way. Um, this is an example of uh, many containers coming to form one building. This is an office that we sent to the Virgin Islands. Um, so it shows that we are not just confined to the space of one or two containers, but we can uh, we can stack and um, place as many containers side by side as our clients need. And this is a, a photo of the inside of the coffee shop, just showing that it may look like a shipping container on the outside, but on the inside, it's uh, it's conditioned, it's furnished, it's it's a very livable space. And this is just a little example of some variety that we have. This is a little stand um, where customers might come in, and and our customers going to outfit it with some equipment that will be on the left side here. And that's the outside of that module that you're looking at. So it's got all these nice folding canopies, exterior lighting, exterior cladding to cover up the actual container corrugation. So you can really achieve everything that you see in a normal building uh, with shipping containers. Um, and one big project that my company worked on, I'll, I'll show you. Um, Mateo, the sound is not on. Is there a way for me to share the sound? Um. Yeah, on the, uh, I think it's on the share screen portion. Um, that says like enable audio. I see it now. Give me just a second here. Okay, I think I got it now. I've never been through never anything been. like this. We had a huge number of patients coming in. We filled up our ICUs in a matter of a week. We're trying to find beds left and right. I've never been through anything like this. This is changing every breathing moment for all of us. There's no time to waste. The timeline was really the big challenge. Designing something that normally takes months, doing it in days. It was all hands on deck, all the time together. Each hospital is consisted of six clusters. Each cluster yields four patient rooms. Every hour, every day that we could turn these units over to translate into lives being saved. This project was feasible because of the team. Everybody stepped up and made this project work. This 
Actually, you know, this was a parking lot. This unit will provide a tremendous impact on not just in this community, but in the region. Once you walk in the door, it's like you are transported into a hospital. It has everything that a hospital has in it. I mean, everything. To follow through with what you say you're going to do on a pace that was as crazy as this one was, it's nothing short of remarkable. Um, so, so that was um, a modular hospital. So at the beginning of coronavirus, as the video explained, we, we really launched into these two big projects for the, uh, the GEMA, uh, which is like uh, a foundation in, in Georgia that, that does emergency projects. And, um, and we built these two auxiliary hospitals that were deployed. Um, and, and we did it in uh, four weeks was the first hospital. So at a, at a pace and at a rate that's that's really hard to find in the construction industry. Um, so that kind of segues into um, just the, the perks of modular. You can uh, you can really get higher quality because you have factory uh, and process improvement and you have a factory QC and that helps a lot. Faster deployment, you can start your site work, uh, like you can start laying the foundation of the building while you start build the building in your factory. Um, from a personal level, subcontractors who might be driving out to different sites, it might be raining one day, it might be, um, it might be just different weather conditions might get in the way. So subcontractors uh, suffer from that in normal work sites, but not in a factory where they always have a roof over their heads. Um, materials are always dry and, and ready to be worked on. Uh, and the last element is sustainability. Um, we, we save materials that we don't use. We keep them for the next job. They don't get uh, destroyed by weather. They, uh, overall, people are more cautious about um, cleaning up and picking up after themselves because they're in a building as opposed to being in a muddy work site. So there's, there's a lot of sustainability uh, value that Modular creates. Um, and the last point that I'd like to address is why does, um, why does modular in particular matter to senior living? Um, and, and some of the value that modular adds is, is higher quality uh, establishments because of the, uh, the QC that goes on inside the factory. Also faster deployment. Um, this is really important in any residential or, or living situations um, because the faster you can build your building, the less time the land is being unused, the less time that uh, you just take away the amount of time that it would normally take and increase the amount of time that you can get your clients into the building. Um, so and the, the final factor is that modular is appropriate for certain cases. It's not a blanket that can do everything yet. Um, and senior living is appropriate because it usually consists of many similar units that can be uh, factory constructed. So it's kind of something you can process more easily in assembly lines. Um, and that uh, concludes my presentation. Um, it's just uh, an overview of what BMARCO does and, and what we do uh, to improve construction. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. That was amazing. The presentation and the video all sums up um, BMARCO perfectly. Um, yeah, and thank you so much, Josh, for being here as well. Um, we would like to hear your input on B Marco and tell us a little bit more about um, West Bay Living as well. Um, so my name is Josh Johnson. I am the COO of West Bay Senior Living. I also own some uh, assisted living and invest in some skilled nursing facilities as well. Um, I, I've been an operator for 25 years, and in fact, um, 
I actually did asset management for a modular system uh, that was in New Hampshire. Now it was not made out of shipping containers necessarily, but uh, I'll show you um, what that uh, could look like. Um, so I'll just get to the picture of the building. There's the building that was actually completely constructed um, from a modular standpoint. And it's a nice looking building. It's in New Hampshire. Uh, and basically it was put together kind of like Legos um, when they, they built that building. So the other experience I have is I worked with a, a skilled nursing company uh, called Plum Healthcare Group, who actually have figured out a way to construct their skilled nursing building basically in Las Vegas and ship it to California. Um, and, you know, this has been a creation of theirs, which is very complicated because in California, you have to meet what's called OSHPOD standards for construction, uh, which are very uh, rigorous. And most companies won't even build the skilled nursing in California anymore because of the cost factor of construction. But by doing it in a modular way, Plum has been able to reduce the amount of construction cost and make it viable overall. And so just listening to Matteo, um, you know, at first I, I wasn't really convinced of assisted living being able to be built out of containers just because assisted living is so home-like. Um, and it's difficult to make it look uh, home-like out of modular containers. However, skilled nursing doesn't necessarily need uh, from the outside to look like a home. It does have to look nice on the inside, uh, but uh, as an example from his pictures, the coffee shop, the in intensive care units that were used by the hospital, those were all built to finish standards that a high-end uh, skilled nursing um, would look like. And so, you know, there may be an application, especially on the higher acuity end uh, and rehab for this type of application. And depending upon cost structures, uh, if you can uh, provide senior living that's a little more affordable, and I'll give you an example. We're building in California, but our cost of construction is extremely high. We're, we're over half a million dollars per unit uh, in our construction. And so if you can make it much less expensive, then maybe there's an application for more affordable assisted living as well. Um, so, which is desperately needed nationwide because the cost of senior living is so high. Um, so, and, and typically what becomes an affordable assisted living is not built to really senior standards where they don't have bathrooms the size that people need and such. And so, I could see this being um, uh, actually a creative way of of solving both maybe a skilled nursing and rehabilitation need as well as could you provide a Medicaid type of environment uh, and still make it viable. So I, I, I really uh, was impressed by the, the pictures uh, and what they've been able to accomplish. Thank you. Scott, about how much do you uh, build per square foot? Is that one for me, build per square foot? Or is that one for Mateo? Uh, for you, Josh. 
Oh boy. Well, it's, it's hard to say per square foot because you have what's called efficiency ratings. Um, so what, when you build a house, it's a hundred percent efficient. Okay. So you can build per square foot and have a pretty good idea of that efficiency rating. Our, 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 our efficiency rating is like a 60, 40. So 60% are in the units, 40% are in common space. So if I'm, I'm thinking about this in my head, uh, which I should probably know this since we're developing, but if I'm developing for 600,000 a unit and my unit size is 900 square feet on average, that's 666 um, uh, dollars per square foot, but you know, and you have your efficiency rating as well. Um, so it's probably what, um, it would be maybe $380 uh, dollars a square foot, somewhere around there. But this is, you know, it's more expensive for the way we build because it's type 1A construction. So what that means is basically we don't use wood, we use steel and concrete so that you can have non-ambulatory over the uh, second floor. Um, so, you know, most assisted livings are two stories for a reason. Uh, and that's because they can uh, be built out of wood still have non-ambulatory on the second floor uh, and be able to rent out all of it for assisted living. When you have a, a wood frame construction that's over two stories, then anything above has to be ambulatory only. For anyone who works in senior living, that's very hard to sell um, because anyone with a walker or wheelchair or dementia can't live on your third floor or above. So if you do type 1A construction, you can meet that requirement. Now, I don't know on a modular system, uh, the engineering that's involved in doing a multi-level structure uh, or uh, what, what that would look like um, in order to gain that type of ambulatory status. I can actually speak to a somewhat of the engineering, um, especially in steel modular and wood modular. So the, the modules are designed to, um, to travel. So they're actually over-engineered in a sense, um, as opposed to stick built where you just build in place. So, so modular is actually, uh, in, in a lot of cases, really good for, um, for, for high quality for that reason, because everything is much more reinforced your walls are a lot thicker because you often have two walls that come together and double the thickness in your walls and the actual structure. Um, so there, there, is, uh, there is some extent to where modular could benefit in that area as well. Hmm. And I, I, I can believe that because of what Plum's done with their rehab facilities. You know, when you build to Oshpod standards, you have to build to earthquake standards in California, which is why it's ridiculously expensive here, because they have to meet the exact same standards as a hospital. Um, and this is a reason why a lot of hospitals went out of business in California as well, is they could not afford to retrofit to earthquake standards. So the fact that Plum could do this on a modular basis uh, really goes with what Matteo was saying, that it's built to a pretty high standard. If you think about shipping containers, I mean, you see them on big ships and they're, they're stacked really high. Shipping containers and modular units are, in a sense, they're very similar to that. You know, they're they're very robust and strong so it's, it's kind of pretty ideal to stack them pretty high and the, the shipping containers lend themselves to even that kind of construction to begin with now i'm, I'm not familiar with the ospa standards but um, 
I know that we have built buildings with no wood inside them at all. And um, our price per square foot is kind of, I think it's around $150 per square foot. But of course, I mean, that could fluctuate based on um, on changes. So maybe, maybe that gives you some clues to if modular is applicable or not. You know, it, it reminds me, like, if you were going to build a, a nursing home nowadays, if, if you could get by on the modular containers as the rooms, it would be interesting to look. I, I think the one difficulty are common area rooms, right? Because you need a lot of space for your activity room and your dining room uh, overall. Um, but if you could create those out of wood on the first floor and then have like a um, spoken wheel the way we used to build or skilled nursing facilities would look like a wheel with spokes uh, in order to maximize the amount of rooms and have the shortest distance to a, um, a dining room so if you could build those out of your modular containers, the spokes coming out and the wheel going around, basically, but then have your common area room built out of uh, wood or whatever you were going to build that out of, I wonder if that would be a, a, an economical option for skilled nursing. Yeah, it is interesting that you mentioned kind of what we would think of as a hybrid construction scenario where elements are stick built and then other parts of the, the building the construction are modular pieces put in uh, one one actually big uh, modular industry is what they call bathroom pods so uh, manufacturers will just build bathrooms and they will send them to uh, general contractors who will install those bathrooms inside their buildings and it could be in sort of high rises where all these floors are concrete floors and they just slide the bathroom in or it could be a, a scenario like this where where say you have different um, living units that you can arrange modularly around some some central larger space that you couldn't build modularly hmm. hey guys um how how wide can you go you know if, if we're making a house is it three four five can you go five containers wide and then what do you, I guess, how do you connect the roof? Is that just wood or do you have to put extra support beams? Um, how wide can you go? Are you saying in an open space, a continuous open space? Yeah, with the shipping containers. So that's an interesting question. Um, so there's, there's a couple ways you can do it. In a shipping container, you can, um, you can, and although, although not desirable in many construction cases, you can put columns in the middle of the container and still create the feel of a, a pretty wide open space and then you can go as many containers wide as you'd like. Um, and, and for shipping containers, it's usually steel. You're not going to reinforce it with wood just because the container is already made out of steel. Um, but there's really no limit to, to the creativity of how you arrange them. You just have to, and this is part of modular is, is maybe adapting people to accept certain things that work modularly, like columns in the middle of the room. Um, well, what about with, uh, with no columns? So you can make the opening a little bit smaller. So you could, you could probably have a 20 foot wide opening with no column in the center. And then you could- Two, that two containers? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the little wood, uh, wood room I showed you, that's two 20 foot containers. And that opening is about I'd say 17 feet wide, so it's it's not a it's not a bad space. So I, I forget which picture that is, but that's that's a pretty good size for the width. Yeah, and now from from a pure modular standpoint, say if you're doing steel or wood module uh, modules, your constraint is actually your shipping width. So Wood modular construction, we have a, a wood division and their modules can be 15 foot wide on the outside, which is, is very uh, considerable for an apartment. Uh, you, can, you can get a living room that's you know, 14 foot wide or you can combine two modules and get a pretty sizable space. 
in the range of 20 to 30 foot um, clear. So, so there's workarounds and there's ways to make the space larger. And, and I imagine there are ways of constructing a facade in front so that you may not even be able to tell that you're stepping into a shipping container. Absolutely, absolutely. Even, I mean, whether it's shipping containers or the other forms of modular, usually they do cover seams with, um, either they clad the whole exterior at one time or they um, have clever ways of, of building seams into the building. I noticed on one of the pictures you're using a PTEC unit for HVAC. Is that the, the most common way for the shipping containers? No, it, it, uh, it isn't actually. Our standard is um, a mini split system. We find those to work really well. You can hang the condenser right on the outside and run your, uh, you can run your lines to anywhere inside the unit pretty easily. Um, other solutions, in the more industrial sense, there's these wall-mounted units that hang on the exterior. That's, that's a popular thing in the, uh, in the industrial sense, but in the commercial sense, it's mainly mini splits. So you, you guys have done a lot of, I guess, hospitals and multifamily. Have you done much senior living already, or is that something you're looking to get into? Um, so we're a pretty young company. We're a growing company. Um, six years old, and we haven't done senior living, but it, it is something that we know of in the modular industry. There's really big players. I think uh, Katera is a really big player, and and my understanding is that they do a decent amount of senior living because it is so adaptable for a modular. I'll, I'll uh, I need one of you guys' contact info. I've got some more questions for after. Absolutely. Yeah, um, we could uh, we could post it somewhere. Um, Camila, feel free to share it. Yeah, you can post it on the chat box. So okay. this way, everybody um, will have a copy of your contact info. Yeah, Mark lives in Texas, and uh, while I'm not sure it would meet Oshpod standards right away, I'm sure it would meet Texas standards. Yep. Um, would, uh, would you guys like to actually, is there any slides in the presentation you would like to see again, um, some of those photos? I'd like to see that one that uh, you were talking about where you put two containers together. Uh, and then uh, had, I think you said a 17 foot opening? Yeah, it's about a 17 foot opening. Oh, actually, so we take 3D scans of the interiors of these containers, and I will open up one of those so that you can actually get a feel for the entire space. Just give me a few minutes here. Sure. While you're loading that up, I'm, I'd like to ask a question from someone who's not very familiar with this industry, um, or maybe a couple questions. The first time I heard about using uh, modular houses or containers for um, just older adults in general to live in was when I read two articles. One of them was about a caretaker in her uh, in the sandwich generation uh, taking care of her mother who had uh, physical impediments. So what she did was they um, they sold off. Sorry about the noise. They sold off uh, whatever properties they had. Sorry, I don't know why they're helicopters here. That's terrifying. Um, so <laughs> I really hope I'm not in trouble. Um, so what, what they did was they purchased um, two containers, I believe, and they put it together. And what was really nice about it was that it was all one story. So um, because she was using a walker, it was a lot easier for her to be mobile around her own personal space. Um, and uh, that article in another LA Times article mentioned something about grid alternatives and something about that keeping costs low and making it more affordable. I'm not sure if there's a different term to that. Um, but I was wondering if any of you guys could talk about that if you had any information, I'd love to know. Emily, what was that last term you mentioned? Uh, grid alternatives or something about 
um, I'm not sure it's like if you, something to do with power utilities that keeps um, costs low when you uh, use modular constructions instead. Well, the uh, the initial building cost is already pretty low, but uh, I mean, if you want to keep utilities really low, you need to um, you need to really have good insulation, which you can outfit shipping containers for. But I don't know if it's the best way to do it. But you you can just put in really good insulation, and also you can even um, install solar panels on the top. That's always an easy solution. Uh, I know in my parents' house they have hot water heater panels at the top, which which save a lot of electricity because you don't you don't heat up your own water. So, um, and I know grid alternatives. I know people even live off the grid by running solar panels or with hooked up to battery systems. So, it it's very potential that you could ship a unit with solar panels on it, with also a battery system on it to uh, to of course make it really energy efficient. What for for the picture we're seeing right now? Like, what's your cost per square foot? Um, this product is probably well. It's well under two hundred dollars a square foot for this uh, this complex. Wow, that's good. Um, to to address Emily's question, uh, that's piggyback off of what Yahoo was saying. We actually worked on a container recently where we did the shell and we sent it to the customer who's going to outfit it. And it's a, um, it's, it's basically what Tiago said, it's this battery storage unit with inverters. Um, so, so this electrical equipment inside of it that will make a housing development um, self-supported off the grid, but it's for a whole development. It's not just for one house. Um, they're a really interesting company working on this uh, this product. So each container, what are, what is that? Eight by twenty? Yes, yeah, so there's twenty foot containers and forty foot containers. Got it. Um, and then are are these used containers that you guys recycle, or are they new containers? So if you dive into the industry, um, it's called a one trip container. Uh, they're the most common kind that we use. It's containers that have been manufactured overseas. They take one trip to here and then, um, and then we're the next users essentially. So those are the least beat up, the nicest looking containers are the easiest to work with. I'll pull up um I'll pull up another scan here so we can see some of the other buildings that we've worked on. If y'all are uh, curious about the the build time, I mean the reason why you can build them so fast is um you know you you have all the trades under one roof essentially, so it's kind of like almost a factory for building things and. You know, first, typically the welders come in and they, they'll cut out big parts, they'll add supports. And that, that can take like two days on a shipping container. And then you have uh, people frame them up, which can take one day itself. And then the next few days, you want to put uh, rough electrical and rough plumbing. Each can take one day. Then you can spray insulation on, underneath them somewhere in there. Then after rough electrical and rough plumbing are in there, you just add your insulation and then add the final coat. So you can really build these in under a month. Speaking of that, you know, one other application I was thinking of when I started out in the industry, we used to use construction trailers um, in order to um, demonstrate our, we, we, we would effectively turn them into a discovery center for our construction site in order to um, uh, show amenities, show, uh, you know, even in one of them, we had created uh, a small apartment. Uh, and since I'm assuming these continue to be movable, 
it would be interesting uh, to see if you could do some type of application like that because I mean, there are so many companies that use this um, uh, exactly what we're seeing right now, actually, uh, in order to um, sell their their building in the future. Yeah, that is a, a, a big sector of modular is kind of these construction site um, movable containers that, that they'll move offices, uh, move offices to construction sites and set them up and deploy them very quickly. There's a, there's a, a lot of companies that do leasing fleets um, out of these kinds of bills. So this is the four uh, 20 foot container office that I showed an exterior picture of earlier. We've showed some small projects before, but currently we have on the floor right now a 13 container project, which has two stories in it. And we're gonna start on a 50 container project pretty soon. So they're very, you can scale these up pretty, pretty fast. Mark, how much does it cost you to build in Texas? Oh, I don't know. I'm looking into that stuff right now, but I'm guessing it's, uh, what, 200 to 250 per foot? Well, it's, yeah, and to their point earlier, it's not just the building costs, it's the carrying cost time uh, of how long it takes to build. So that's another interesting factor. I'm uh, I'm talking to a uh, single family builder, and and what they designed, it, it looks like it should be shipping containers. Yeah, uh, you know they're building it from scratch, and they they want to know more about you know modular, you know to be more efficient. Um, so this is real interesting for that. And and you guys do wood modular as well, right? I saw that on your website. Yeah, we have a different division that we're not in that they do wood modular, but what they're doing is, is multifamily units, apartment complexes. Uh, and the whole, the whole project is a huge project. It's like 200 units. So much larger scale than single, uh, single family. Like uh, Josh's River Glen house. Yeah. Say that again? It's like the River Glen that Josh showed us. Yes, yes, sort of like that. Pretty interesting. Is this is it better insulated too with the with the steel for the um, shipping containers? Well, really, the best thing we offer is spray foam insulation. Um, that'll stick right to the steel and and create a really nice, um, just a really nice uh, shell for your your building. So what is that? Is that like spray on fiberglass or what is it? Um, it's, it's a two component uh, mixture that I don't, I don't think it's fiberglass. Um, it's, it's a pretty widely used thing in the industry. And I mean, in the construction industry, people will use uh, closed cell spray foam insulation. Uh, the guys just roll up with a, with a, their trailer and they can come in and spray um, any R value that you want. Hmm. Is there any further questions? Because we have another eight more minutes before we end this event. So far, I'm enjoying a lot of uh, engineering details going on here. Um, this is a, definitely a very interesting um, concept. And uh, any other questions? Like we can take another two or three more questions. I, I just have one more. Your, your 50 unit structure that you're building now how many stories is that is that a combination of all 50 together are you blowing out walls like what does that what does that look like yeah it's a it's a two-story structure 
Um, I mean, it's just got different offices, bathrooms. Um, it, it's just got a bunch of different rooms for the uh, the client. It's for the uh, I think it's for the Navy. Um, we're not we're not the Navy is not our client, but we're a subcontractor to the actual general contractor. So does this have an elevator then? Um, I don't think it does. I don't think it does, which would make the second floor probably not ADA accessible. But I'd, I'd have to check. We haven't, from an operational standpoint, we haven't started the project yet. It's still in a pre-construction. Got it. Okay. I feel like a uh, shipping container by itself, though, would, would lend itself, you know, it's kind of tall, 40, 40 feet. It could lend itself to making a portable elevator unit that you could just, you know, tack on to a building somewhere. You know, you could ship it by itself. That's an interesting thought right there. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about that one. Okay, looks like um, this event is about to um, conclude. Um, I would like to thank everybody here who has attended and joined our wonderful speakers this evening. And this ev event has definitely cracked our heads to think out of the box. And we have learned that modular structures could possibly be a very viable solution in the future for senior living. And um, with that said, Ryan, do you have an announcement that you want to shout out real quick? Yeah, for sure. So for everyone who will be continuing on in their programs next year, I'd highly encourage you guys to run for elections. Our SJE board elections, the executive board um, is open right now. So if you'd like to self-nominate, you can do so until Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Um, I highly encourage it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or any other SGA eBoard member, such as Camelia, who put on this great event. So once again, thank you so much for attending. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And the recording will be available on the website as well. So have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.